Bon appétit. Bon appétit. I must say I have never tested lardo like that uh, before, and the lardo what that I have tested be, uh, in the US or in some other parts uh, of the world uh, have nothing to do with that kind of lardo. This is very unique because the flavor to begin with, and the way the slice it is so thin when you put it in the mouth it just melts it disintegrates in your mouth. They say everything is better with bacon, so we've made it into an ice cream. I want to see the combination of the goat cheese and the bacon. We have a nice pork tenderloin with the bacon, and I smell it. It's going to taste good. Traveling through Tuscany is amazing in its range of experiences. We foraged for porcini and chestnuts in the mountains and hunted wild boar in a forest. We harvested olives from the farms of a 600-year-old estate and we bought fresh fish right off the boats in a seaside port of Livorno. But one of my most special times was spent high above the Mediterranean in a mountain town named Colonata, where they have been mining marble since the Romans were there but are really famous for the lardo. Depending on the region, you have some dominant uh, products into the cooking. If you go to Gascony, you have foie gras in every dish. Here, the lardo is definitely uh, part of the cooking and part of the tradition. I met with Luca, who had offered to introduce me to a local lardo producer. Welcome to Colonnata. Thank you but very first, much. there was lunch. Go and have a lunch? Of course, oh, right. I follow you. Come with me. The restaurant is very rustic, and uh, uh, I love the feel of it. You feel comfortable immediately. The kitchen looks really beautiful, and uh, it, I love the size, and I love the design of the kitchen. It's a, a fairly traditional um, equipment that they have. You know, they had a rabbit um, uh, braising, they had something in the oven, and you had all the food uh, on top of the stove cooking very slowly and you could smell um, all the sauces, and, and I just, uh, just love that. I mean, it's almost like a fantasy kitchen, a, fant a kitchen that I would um, love to have during my vacation. But I hadn't come all the way to Colonata just to look at kitchens. I was here for the lardo. Cure fat from a pig's back, aged in marble for six months or more. Like so many of our favorite food today, Lardo was originally disregarded, a cheap leftover after the pigs were sent off to become prosciutto. But here in Coronata, where it was aged and cured for the miners working in the quarries, it became a delicious delicacy. If you think of the clean white fat on a slice of ham, rather than the red meat, that is the lardo. It is almost like bacon flavor butter. Mm -hmm. This lardo with uh, anchovies, anchovies. Tomato. tomato, just lardo, and this is uh, uh, meat cooked that is not cooked, it is aged in the salt that is uh, the... From the lardo. From the lardo, yes. Fantastic. Okay. Buon appetito. And what you cannot see on the camera, it's the smell, it smells beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Where we you start? start? Uh, I don't know, we start with the crostini, no? Crostini, yeah. Okay. I, you take this one, I take Without that one. Yeah. Bon appetito. Bon appetito. Mm. The flavor is fantastic. Yeah. It goes really well with the anchovy. So the anchovy being cured, mm -hmm. it's, very, it's very pungent flavor, very strong. And then the lardo is almost like a, like a butter. So it's complementing the fish very well. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good contrast. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very nice. Well, we have to try that now. Everybody has his own recipe, and it's, is it like a secret? Yes. 
uh, every family has its own secret about making lardo. That comes from uh, more than 1,000 years, maybe. And uh, here, there, there's full of uh, cellars in, uh, here in Colonnata. In this town. Um, very little, and uh, little are, are the every, cellars. Everybody's too. making his own lardo. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's very unique um, to this region or to this town um, that they will have such a, a very thick piece of lard cured and flavored with the herbs. Um, I have never seen, I have of course seen bacon before, mm -hmm. but this is a very specific product. When you eat it, it just melts in your mouth, it just disappears and it's, it's pure flavors. And you have no idea that it's such a rich food. It, it tastes like it's very light actually. Oh, what is it? Coniglio. Isosato, rabbit. Farci. Coniglio? Rabbit. Rabbit, huh? Mm -hmm. Isosato, farci. So it's a, it's a rabbit which has been deboned and yeah. it's stuffed with lardo. Yeah. And we have some sliced almonds on top. The lardo brings a very subtle subtlety about the dish. It's, it complemented the rabbit, brought some uh, moisture and made the rabbit very rich. And the herbs were mixing with the flesh of the, of the rabbit. It was uh, very interesting. This is absolutely exceptional. What is amazing about uh, fat, because it's, it's, uh, fat, uh, fat. it's fat, is that if you want to catch flavors, you catch with uh, fat. It's very easy to catch flavors with fat. It's very difficult to catch flavors with liquid. Like water doesn't catch flavor uh, in the same way. It's not as intense. Um, so here we have something which is really um, uh, a very harmonious combination in between all all the products oh, yeah. that, that we it are works using. Looks like a, a sponge, more or less. I'm a very happy man now. Yeah. I'm happy. You are and, happy. and the wine helps to be happy too, of course. Okay. So salute. Eh? Salute. Chantine. Chantine, see. Si. If you want, we can go and visit uh, the, the cellars. Yes, I'm very excited about mm -hmm. learning um, about the process and, yes, yes. and see the way it's done. And I can introduce you to Gino, that is one of the most important producers here in Colonnata, that has a lot of uh, cellars in here. And we can go and uh, you he will explain. Gonna, do you think he's going to share his secret? Mm, almost, I'm not, I'm almost. not sure about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think no. Colonnata is located high in the mountains above Carrara the marble capital of Italy. Wherever you look, there are marble mines. Even the main square is completely paved with marble. Marble is also one of the secret ingredients that make Lardo di Colonnata so special. Okay, this is the cellar of Gino. Let's see if he's in it. Gino! Grazie mille. Prego. Okay. Okay. It smells, it smells good, huh? Olardo is uh, put uh, inside the, those big blocks of marble, white marble of, from Carrara, yes. that uh, let uh, it breathe. It's not like plastic or uh, metal. You know, this big box of marble, marble is, is porous a little bit. The marble is porous, yes. And is put inside in the levels, just one above the other, and uh, mixed with uh, salt and uh, this uh, mix of special herbs. And uh, uh, it remains there for uh, six months as minimum. That's the minimum the required minimum, yes. to have the, the lardo. Yes, yes. But the secret really is the mix that you're doing, right? Yes, yes, yes. The, the, the percentage of, of yeah. different ingredients that you're using. I told you before, three secrets. The mix, the marble, and the, col and the colonnata, the, the climate. The aroma in that cellar was so enticing, I couldn't resist. I just had to have uh, one more taste. Hey, perfect. Uh, a chef. Hey, he's a chef. Look at that. Beautiful. See? Do you know? It's fantastic. Absolutely amazing. So I am with Michael Lesconis, our pastry chef. And this is, Michael, your little world. It is, it is. Separate, completely separate. It's very compact. 
and it's totally separated from the kitchen for many reasons. And uh, uh, one of the reasons is that in the kitchen we have a lot of preparations with onion and garlic and uh, aromatics that really are strong and that could uh, al almost like contaminate some of the, the sweets that you create here, especially when you use butter and uh, it catch the, the, the flavors right away. Um, it's also a different temperature than the kitchen. Michael needs to have a little bit of a, a what, a coldest? Definitely a little bit cooler. Cooler than yeah. the, the kitchen. How many people do you have in your place? We have uh, six uh, plus myself. So seven. Yeah. I just come back from Colonata and mm. uh, over there they use um, uh, the lardo, which is the fat, Amazing. on almost everything. And here I think you have prepared something that is uh, one of your signature of the season. Well, uh, the figs, figs are just coming out right now. Yes. Um, and I've always loved kind of salty, uh, smoky flavors with figs. And, and really, bacon is a great. And who doesn't like bacon? Is a great foil for that. Now, in dessert, it's not so common. But especially if you think about like the nostalgia of American breakfast, where you have the maple kind of oozing in with the bacon. Yes. It, it's actually, I think, a nostalgic flavor for a lot of people. So we've made it into an ice cream. And Michael taught me that a grain of salt can bring up all the flavors and the sweetness of a dessert. Well, we definitely put salt in a lot of the doughs, but as a, as a finishing agent, yes. a little grain of salt makes a huge, a huge pop. So we are using bacon, which is pretty unusual, I guess, yeah. to I mean, create it's, a dessert. I mean, I think it. people are, are, are starting to find new places for bacon. I mean, yes. it's, it's so popular as, a, as an ingredient still. And it tastes so good. I mean, of course. Uh, they say everything's better with bacon. Right? Yes, it's so fantastic. And it's, it's a complex flavor because it has some meatiness, it has some sweetness, you have the fattiness and richness and the smokiness. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not an item that is not bringing a lot in, into the food when you use it. It's definitely complex. So what did you do here well, with the bacon? So, so for the ice cream, I, I like to work with this, this slab bacon and we just, we just dice it up. And then we render it out. So we start to develop the color. We start to render out all the fat. And then I just dump the whole thing. So when you render the bacon, do you think you intensify the flavors of the bacon? Absolutely. You get a little bit of that, that caramelization going mm -hmm. on. And then we just dump the whole thing into milk. Milk? Yeah. And then we, we infuse this. So you actually see all the fat has congealed and floats up to the top. Yeah. So we can just strain that right off. So we're really just getting the. It's really uh, smell like bacon. I mean, it's smoky. So, so that will become an ice, an ice cream. Yeah, so we just strain out the bacon. And you'd be amazed. I actually thought we'd be able to use the, the bacon bits for other things, but all the flavor is sucked out. It tastes like nothing, the, the actual And bits the of milk bacon. was cold, or you boiled the milk? We warmed the milk a little bit. A little bit. And, and, the, and the, the bacon is right out of the oven, so it's So hot. it's like, a, almost like a, a tea of bacon. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> Something like that. Essentially. So, I, I thought that figs would be a great vehicle yes. for this bacon. And, and you know, figs, it's, it, it's, it, there's a sweet spot for figs. It's either they're mealy or they're so ripe they're, they're mush. Yes. So I've been spending all morning trying to find just the right, the right specimens. I roasted some in the oven here, and they're starting to they get really juicy and soft. Yeah, can I see that? Yeah, very juicy and soft, you can see that. Pastry chefs are a bit of a pyromaniacs as well, right? So this is this is another another cool way to kind of just briefly kiss these with some heat, and that's what the did, did you use the word kiss? Kiss, kiss, kiss with the flame. Kiss with the flame. Okay. Yeah, you use the torch a lot. I a have lot. noticed that. You, it's a different way of using fire because it's it's intense but gentle. I can see it's caramelizing the thing. This is going to actually give us more of a crust, like almost like a creme brulee. Yes, I see yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. So again, with our uh, so bacon now, ice now cream. So now we're talking about presentation here. Yeah. So I thought some red wine caramel. Red wine caramel. Can I try it that? It worked really well. Just caramelized sugar and red wine reduced down a little bit. That's good. So you're doing really a dish which is mixing some. Uh, savory food and uh, a sweet food. Sure, I mean, and I actually worked as a line cook for a few years, so I, I'd like to think I bring a little bit of that spontaneity and, and, and some of the, the plating aspect to it as well. I also think some goat cheese 
goat cheese? The, the sharpness of the goat cheese will also kind of uh, punctuate the, the bacon a little bit. Cream? So we just took some goat cheese and lightened it with some, uh, with some whipped cream. Goat cheese and whipped cream, OK. There's a little and vanilla, a little sugar as well. In, in, no. Inside the goat cheese. Inside the goat cheese. To, to bring some sweetness yeah. to it. I'm just I'm putting down some uh, ground up hazelnuts, and yes. that'll kind of help uh, stabilize the ice cream. Well and give some nice flavor too, actually. Of course. So this and is our, we have the bacon this is ice our cream. finished bacon ice cream. You see, it, it kind of just looks like vanilla. You don't really get a color out of the bacon. You don't even know it's uh, it's smoky, and I guess it's it's smoky too. And we have a beautiful dessert, really. And then a little bit more of a savory aspect. Just a little grind of black pepper. I think works really well. I'm also a big fan of, of herbs, fresh herbs in dessert. So a little bit of thyme. And just thyme a couple is, leaves. It's pretty strong, so you don't want to put too much. Yeah, three or four leaves, and that's it. So it's time to really try what you have done. And I can't wait. I want to see the combination of the goat cheese and the bacon. It's really work. And it develops. I think it develops in, as it yeah, as it, it melts. You get a little bit more layers of flavor. Very subtle and very refined. This is a great dessert. Thank you. Fantastic. Like Michael said at Le Bernardin, everything tastes better with bacon. And today we are going to use bacon to wrap some pork loin. Actually, it's a tenderloin of pork, and also bacon to make some peas à la française. So I'm beginning with the bacon that I'm going to put on a cutting board like that, and I'm going to wrap the pork filet mignon, or the pork tenderloin, that I season with a tiny bit of salt, not too much, because the bacon has some saltiness already. A little bit of pepper, and I'm starting to wrap the tenderloin in it, making sure it's well protected because the tenderloin doesn't have any fat. So the bacon will not only protect, give flavor, but bring the fat content that it needs not to be too dry. The excess bacon is going to be cut. And I will use it to make the peas with it. And I'm going to saute the pork on high heat in the center of the pan. And we're going to let the heat come up. And we'll start to have some color and obviously change the flavor of the meat. In the meantime, I'm going to cut some of the leftover bacon. And I'm going to cut a julienne. Julienne is when you make some small strings of anything, vegetables, meat, bacon. So all that julienne here is going to flavor the peas. I'm hearing some noise in the pan, so I'm making sure that everything is going fine. We're starting to see the oil of the bacon coming out. Not only bacon make everything taste better, but the smell in the house is really fantastic. At the same time, I'm going to put some heat in this pan here and render the bacon. So rendering means that you are letting the bacon cook and melt and we are going to let it color. I'm going to flip the pork loin. I don't want to bring too much color because we are going to cook it in an oven. So we just want a little bit of browning, but not too much, so that way it won't be too dark. Here, it's going to be melting very soon. And soon as I hear that noise, I'm going to add some onions in it that have been chopped. But what you want is to have a little bit of coloration in the pan. That will give flavor to your peas when you're going to cook them with it. In the meantime, I'm going to put the pork in the oven at 400 degrees. Now we have the peas, and very often you find peas in markets frozen. The season for the peas is the spring. It's about one month during the year where they are at their best, and most of the time after that it's frozen. They don't have too much flavor. However, they can taste delicious if you cook them with some 
uh, bacon, onion, something that has a nice, smoky, deep flavor. So we are going to add the peas that have been blanched. Actually, when you buy them uh, frozen, they are already blanched, which means they have been cooked a little bit, but they can be cooked a little bit more, and they will be more tender. And now I'm going to add a little bit of chicken stock. Bring it to boil with a little piece of butter. The butter will bring a laison and will make um, the peas much more delicious, actually. And I'm going to add something that we always do in France. At the last minute, a julienne of salad. I'm going to take some leaves. And usually what we do is that we use the outside leaves for the julienne for the peas and the heart to make the salad. So we are going to roll the leaves like that and make a julienne again. The julienne of salad brings some sweetness to the dish. The salad will go at the very last minute in it. Now the pork tenderloin is ready and we are going to take it out of the oven, still sizzling. At the same time, I'm going to add in the peas the salad julienne and mix it together. Let it cook for maybe a minute or two until the salad becomes tender. And then we will slice the tenderloin and put it on top of the peas. And you remember in Colonata, we had the rabbit with the lardo and Michael did this incredible ice cream with bacon. And now we have a nice pork tenderloin with the bacon and the peas à la française. The pork is really cooked to perfection, as you can see, it's juicy and it's going to be very tender. You can see the salad is cooked. You have the bacon, you have a little bit of jus that comes from the chicken stock and the butter. That is going in the bottom of the plate. Like that. Not forgetting the jus, because the jus tastes really good. It has that smokiness and richness coming from the bacon. I'm going to put the pork on top of it, like that. And I'm going to eat it. And I smell it. It's going to taste good. Really good. The peas have that very rich, smoky flavor. The pork tenderloin is very tender by nature, but it has a lot of flavor because of the bacon. It has a nice texture because the bacon is crispy or crunchy. And it's really a great combination. You also have the jus that brings a lot of smokiness to the dish and it's gonna go really well with a nice glass of red wine. Santé, cook from life. You know, Michael Corleone got it completely wrong. All business is personal. Eric calls up and says, uh, let's play. I play. But there's certain people in your life who call you up four o'clock in the morning and say, meet me on the corner of uh, Avenue D and 4th Street and bring a handgun and a stolen car, a tarpaulin and some duct tape. You don't ask why, you just go. Sex, drugs, rock and roll and food. Today my guest, Anthony Bourdain. And everything is on the table. Yes. When do you start to have problems with drugs? Any and illusions I had about being the next Paul Bocuse, chances six. are there were chemicals involved in that. From age 13 or 14 on, me and my friends defined ourselves by not just what records we were listening to, but what drugs we were doing, okay? So I arrived at, in college at age 17, like where's the coke and the, and the acid and what, whatever else. And that got. was already fashionable? No, we were sort of ahead of the curve on the cocaine thing. What have you always wanted to do and you haven't had a chance to do yet? And uh, I just blurted out, I want to build a wooden boat. 